dark cherries, berries, even a bit of oak, and some nice smoky notes to boot. You know how Daddy likes his smoke. <laughs> oh, just a whisper of banana peel. Is there any evidence that humans can actually taste the adjectives that they're throwing around here? The 1997 Merlot might be called liquefied Viagra. An incredibly sexy nose of smoke, black fruits, cappuccino, and toasty wood is followed by an expansive, terrifically concentrated wine with a sumptuous texture, no hard edges, beautifully integrated acidity and tannin, and a long 35 second finish. Is that a description from a bodice ripping romance novel? No, those are the tasting notes of a 1997 Merlot from the book Parker's Wine Buyer's Guide by Robert M. Parker. Swirl and sniff, my friends, because wine tasting is big business with what seems like a bottomless bowl of word salad to go along with it. But is there anything to this palate sensitivity? Can we humans really suss out the particulars of wine with all the different grape varietals? Well, in a 2001 study, researcher Frederic Brochet asked 54 wine experts to give their opinions on two different glasses of wine, one red and one white. Now here's the rub. Both glasses contained white wine, but one had been dyed with red food coloring to appear as though it might be a Merlot or a Cabernet. According to Robert Gonzalez, writing for io9, quote, the experts described the red wine in language typically reserved for characterizing reds. They called it jammy, for example, and noted the flavors imparted by its crushed red fruit. Not one of the 54 experts surveyed noticed that it was, in fact, a white wine. So if we can't even tell if it's a red or white wine we're drinking, what about all those other descriptions? like vegetal, jammy, or even barnyard. The Wall Street Journal's article, A Hint of Hype, A Taste of Illusion by Leonard Mulutnow, cites a 1996 study in the Journal of Experimental Psychology. It turns out that even flavor-trained professionals can't reliably identify more than three or four components in a mixture, although wine critics regularly report tasting six or more. In fact, the adjectives we use subconsciously change depending on how expensive we perceive the wine to be. In a follow-up to Frederic Brochet's 2001 study testing whether experts could tell the difference between red and white wine, Brochet presented two bottles of Bordeaux to wine experts. Both were the same modest brand, but they had different labels. Guess what? The fancy label earned heroic descriptors like agreeable, woody, complex, balanced, and rounded, while the cheap-looking label earned crappy adjectives like weak, short, light, flat, and faulty. What does this tell us? Well, wine tasting may be the ultimate act of creating your own reality. Of course, if all this pretense means that we might one day have the chance to sit down with William Shatner and compare tasting notes, well, then let us unleash all the florid language we can muster. We'd say that the overall character is that of a sex-loaded, scarlet, endowed, jaunty, and erotically scented with every part smelling and tasting provocative, flamboyant, and blooming. And if you really want to be super pretentious about it, ask what kind of soil the grapes were grown in. Smack your lips and then declare that you can detect the terroir on your palate. So what's your favorite obnoxious wine descriptor? Me, I've got to go with either nude or barnyard. For me, it's musty. All right, drop yours below. And to keep the videos coming, make sure to subscribe.